La Cagnon Palace, October 1950. In a cabinet meeting, a decision is made. Ramon Magsaysay is to be Secretary of National Defense. A practically unknown man was to occupy the offices in the Army General Headquarters at Camp Murphy. Soon, people who had any business with the armed forces discovered that he was a man who took his job seriously. Nothing was too small for him. Nobody was too unimportant to rate his personal attention. Although he had been active in the guerrilla movement during the Japanese occupation, and had been twice elected to Congress, Magsaysay was not known by the general public. But now, more and more people realized that he was one destined to accomplish what none had achieved before. The very day of his induction as Secretary of National Defense, the Hooks launched a plot to liquidate him. But his personal courage and decision turned the tables on them and the Politburo of the Philippines was discovered, seized, tried, and sent to prison. In the field, the campaign against the dissidents was taken in hand. Army commanders were surprised with personal visits from the secretary himself, who learned firsthand about their needs and problems, and what's more, managed to give them the necessary support to carry out their assignments. In a series of rallies, the issue against communism was brought out to the people, not only in the big towns, but everywhere, north, south, east and west, on wings of hope, the ardent desire for peace and justice that is forever present in the human heart poured forth its doctrine of love and trust. Christians, Mohammedans and pagans alike heard the basic truth of democracy expounded and were told by former hooks themselves how communism degrades the free man. On the other hand, the hooks were told that it was time to surrender. Planes flew to the mountain fastnesses and dropped literature and safe conduct passes. As Filipino citizens, they had the right to be protected by the government of the Republic. They had the right to seek redress of grievances. As outlaws, they could only expect death, and if overpowered, imprisonment. Spotter planes ranged the skies day after day, seeking murderous bands. Reporting gangs fleeing after a raid. ever ready to take off at a moment's notice. Trusty Mustangs, serviced by Filipinos, ready to punish killers who thought themselves beyond the reach of a punitive arm. And for those who surrendered and had no blood on their hands, Edcor, land of promise, where former misguided men and law-abiding citizens fostering a common hope, toiled together for their future in land wrestled from thick, impassable primeval forests to make a place for them by the resourcefulness and drive of a practical man. This contact with the hard realities of life the steady purpose in bringing the government to serve the people made Magsaysay renounce the security of submission to the party in power and flung him into the race for the presidency of the republic. As a candidate, Ramon Magsaysay refused the relative comfort of prepared tours and plunged inland to see for himself how the people fared. His was not strictly a political campaign. His was rather an inspection trip, where he saw and heard more than the people heard him. Everywhere he sought the forgotten Filipino, 
the man who lives for the soil and gets his living from the soil. The so-called small man, without whom the nation would not exist. For if it were not for the humble stock of Palai, the proud rice mill would not have been invented. Election day came, and all throughout the land, despite threats of violence, the people of the Philippines cast their vote. Soon it was known that they had recognized his worth and had chosen him for their next president. In Manila, the Senate and the House meet in a joint session. The hall is packed. The newly elected senators sit in a row. The committee appointed for the purpose canvasses the results of the last election and tallies the votes. Senate President Eulogio Rodriguez and Speaker Eugenio Perez preside. After the official results are made public, Senate President Rodriguez reads the proclamation and declares that Ramon Magsaysay and Carlos P. Garcia have been elected president and vice president of the Philippines, respectively. Proclamation Day has come. An unprecedented crowd lines the streets and fills the grounds where the ceremonies will take place. Officials and distinguished guests occupy the seats at the inaugural grandstand. Ramon Magsaysay leaves his home en route to the Luneta. The presidential party arrives. Salute to the flag. The parade. Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Ricardo Paras, administers the oath of office to Vice President Carlos P. Garcia. Ramon Magsaysay takes the oath of office. The new President of the Philippines speaks. My countrymen, you have called upon me to assume the highest office within your gift. I accept the trust humbly and gratefully. My sole determination is to be president for the people. Our people, sustained by God, under whose protection we have place our destiny and happiness and is strengthened by an abiding faith in his goodness and mercy. Our people, united and free, shall shape a future worthy of our noble heritage if we but act, act together, act wisely, act with courage, and act unselfishly in a spirit of patriotic dedication. I thank you. Thus, a new era is inaugurated in the Philippines by Ramon Magsaysay that promises bright hopes 
for our young republic, a new era whose success depends on everybody, for the job of building a nation is the job of all.